Hello ladies and gentlemen and a warm welcome to today's webinar which is brought to you by Shared Services Link and sponsored by OB10. Today we're looking at setting up purchase to pay to hit 90% touchless processing and looking in particular at the Imperial College story. So my name is Susie West and I am the host for today and I'm the founder and CEO at Shed Services Link and I'm very pleased to be presenting as our guest speakers John Whitlow who's the Director of Financial Services and Procurement at Imperial College and Ruud Van Hilton who is SVP of Sales at OB10. You of course do have a role to play which is to make sure that you dig deep and remember those questions that really compelled you to register for this webinar in the first place. So please make sure that you post those through to me nice and early. Um, the sooner you do post those through to me, the, the more chance uh, you have of them being asked. And I will take all of your questions and put as many as I can to Rude and to John in the last 10 minutes of this webinar. So please do make sure that you stay online for that as well. So let's have a look at the context behind this webinar and um, many shared services organizations and large enterprise organizations are aggressively looking at electronic invoicing and deploying e-invoicing and we all know that what we're looking for with e-invoicing is to make sure that we're looking at a touchless process. So what you really don't want to be doing is just um, um, electrifying, if you will, a broken process. So it's really looking at making sure that your process is as, as straight through as, as possible, your first time match rate is nice and high, um, your, your purchase to pay process really starts in the most compliant way, and then to really to convert as much of that to electronic, and then, then you're looking at a touchless environment where your electronic data comes into your accounts payable environment and it posts automatically without any human being having to interact with that whatsoever. So I think it's it's known and this um, webinar will really focus on and how to achieve it but it's known that in order to get to pure touchless um, you're looking obviously at the technology that you deploy, but you're also looking at um, the adoption by the people across your organization, but also across your supplier base. So we'll be really focusing on those areas of technology, of people, and also of process. So just before I hand over to our first presenter, I'd just like to ask the first poll. We'll be asking three poll questions today, and uh, we do actually look to have about 70% response rate to these questions, so please make sure everybody participates. Let's find out with understanding the scale of the organizations that we've got on this webinar today. So how many invoices do you process annually? Is it less than 50,000? 50, 50 to 150,000? 150 to 300,000? Or are you, are you processing more than 300,000 invoices coming in from your suppliers? on an annual basis. So we're currently at 60% of you responding. So please, if you haven't already done so, let's try and nudge that number up. As I mentioned, we do like to try and get north of 70. Um, closing the poll in three, two, one. Okay, coming up on your screen now. Many thanks for that. We are at 75% of you participating there. So um, we have 25% of you with less than 50,000. Um, invoices coming in per annum and 40%, uh, 41%, so the majority of you really uh, processing more than 300,000 invoices per annum. So with that, let me hand over to our first guest presenter, Ruud van Hilton from OB10. Over to you please, Ruud. Thank you very much, Susie, and uh, uh, to all of you, a very warm welcome from us here in, uh, in London, the OB10 headquarters. And also thank you for uh, answering that first question in the, in the poll, uh, the very interesting interesting numbers there. Um, as Susie said in her, in her introduction, uh, touchless processing, electronic invoicing are very hot and, and shared service centers um, are uh, aggressively pursuing uh, touchless processes. Um, and why is that? Uh, first and foremost, of course, it's, it is a, it's, it's a quite, quite a bit cheaper. As you can see um, uh, on, on the slide here, it says that electronic um, uh, invoice processes, automated invoice processes, are, to, are between 60 to 80 percent 
are more cost effective than than the, than the paper based uh, colleagues. And this comes from the Belentis report. If, if you're interested in that report, uh, well, OBT can make that available to you. Um, the EU Commission has recently calculated that companies can, uh, to, to companies together in Europe, could save in excess of 230 billion euros, which you could argue that that is the euro crisis gone in one blow. We all started to adopt uh, electronic invoicing tomorrow. But it's not only cheaper. Um, as Susie uh, already stated in her introduction, uh, businesses uh, want trustless processing for a variety of reasons. Of course, cost effectiveness, but also the ability to process invoices uh, without any human intervention allows organizations to scale to uh, varying volumes much, e much more easily and also to uh, drive other types of compliance in their organizations, such as purchase order compliance, which, are, which is much better done if you run electronic invoicing than if you are still based on paper. And last and certainly not least, uh, in view of the very recent climate uh, reports, uh, e-invoicing makes a significant contribution to being greener, saving the environment, and meeting your corporate social responsibility targets. If you look at where most companies go, and we see that uh, across the OB10 customer base, is that obviously everybody starts, first of all, as Susie called it, electrifying the, the invoice, electrifying suppliers, by moving the paper invoice um, out of the accounts payable process. And actually, going touchless is a bit of a journey and in invokes and involves a, a, uh, an increasing level of automation in the procure to pay or in the accounts payable process. So first of all, of course, you, people are trying to get just get the paper out to make suppliers capable of sending electronic data or use a portal rather than sending paper invoices in. But the longevity of that business value is, is actually relatively, relatively short. Um, and then, of course, the, the majority of, of, of uh, companies try to um, uh, move from getting uh, paperless invoices in into being able to process those invoices, those electronic invoices, into such in, in such a manner that no, no people are involved and no human intervention is required. Not only that, having uh, the electronic invoice data available also allows you to manage suppliers quite differently. If you think about your own organization and think about how many calls your procurement organization or your accounts payable organization gets from suppliers about, do you have my invoice? When will I get paid? Are there any issues with my invoices? Uh, if you could handle those queries online, and obviously your procurement and AP environments would be uh, a, a lot more efficient uh, dealing, with, dealing with those questions. And for suppliers, it'd be much, much easier to manage their cash and find answers whenever they want to their invoice queries. Does it stop there? No, not really. Um, there's quite some demands in the market at the moment about supply chain financing or the ability to finance uh, um, invoice transactions slightly differently from the traditional manner. And the speed of the e-invoicing process allows you to do that. You could make suppliers capable of choosing for themselves which invoices they would, might, would, they would want to make eligible for discounts and early payments. But also, having all that information, having all the information about uh, about electronic invoices online level means billions and billions of spend online level visibility would, would allow you to analyze your spend in a completely different manner than what you are capable of doing today. So if you're looking at running enhanced analytics or, or spend variance analytics, then that is definitely where the demand of the future is going to be. Is then this, is all of this new or uh, could you say that quite a number of companies have already embarked on that journey? Well, I can only speak for AB10, but quite a number of our customers, and this is a small cross-section of the types of companies you would find on AB10, have embarked on that journey. And quite a number of our customers are currently already in that second stage where they uh, uh, achieve significant savings and, and scalability uh, improvements by, by being able to, to manage the, the process more touchless and being able to uh, to match invoices actually before they come into the come into the organisation. Also, if you look at, um, at, at this little cross section of our uh, of our entire customer base, I think you will agree that um, 
you, you will see quite a number of different uh, verticals or industries on, on this particular slide indicating there's not really so much about which industry you're in, there's much more about your appetite to do something about your paper stream, your business drivers, and, uh, and perhaps uh, your, requ your requirements for scalability and increased compliance. So these companies are already realizing the benefits and have definitely embarked on that journey with OB10, as, as, as has um, Imperial College, from whom you will hear their journey in a second. But before we start uh, hearing about uh, Imperial College's journey, I have to pass you back to Susie for the next poll question, please. Thank you very much, Ruth. So, appearing on your screen, how do you currently process your invoices? Um, so, maybe just take the three ones that are really the kind of three um, key ways in which you process your invoices today. Is it manually via paper? Is it mainly scanning OCR? Is it mainly EDI? Is it um, mainly through e-invoicing, or is it mainly through receiving PDF invoices, which are emailed to you by your suppliers? So if you can really tick the three ones that um, really represent the, the three main ways in which you receive your invoices. 69% uh, of you have responded, so if you haven't already done so, please just uh, tick those three boxes, please, and closing the poll in three, two, one. Thank you very much. Coming up on your screen now. So uh, we were at 78% of you responding. So that's uh, that's great. Um, so great for benchmarking purposes. Um, you can see here that man manually via paper is still really the chief way in which most of you receive your invoices. Um, and uh, interestingly, at the bottom, 26% coming in with EDI, 37% um, e-invoicing, and I'm sure if we ask that question in a year's time, the same question, that number will certainly be increasing. And 57% um, are receiving invoices through PDFs being emailed to you. So I'm sure um, there are quite a few points there for discussion. Back to you, please, read. Thank you, Susie, and, and thank you for this uh, for this information. Quite quite striking that quite a number of the participants in the webinar still receive so many invoices on paper. It 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 shows that there's still a lot of work for every ten to do, and we would welcome you to uh, to talk to us to, to about getting rid of those paper invoices. But before we do, obviously. Uh, we promise you that uh, our guest of today is John Whitlow. He is the Director of Financial Services and Procurement at, um, at Imperial College, an old institute with a fantastic history. Over to you, John, to, uh, to talk to us about your journey. Thank you very much, Rude, and welcome to everyone. Uh, as Rude said, welcome to London. It's quite a nice day here today, so I hope that's the same for participants in the webinar. Uh, my agenda... Uh, covers quite a few areas. I'm going to uh, tell you a little bit about the organization, uh, Imperial itself, uh, about our finance and procurement organization, how it's evolved over the last few years, what our particular perspective is on touchless processing and how we actually go about uh, doing that within Imperial, which was very much our starting point when looking to adopt electronic invoicing. Uh, the sorts of things organizations like yourselves need to consider when uh, moving or looking to adopt a uh, touchless environment. Uh, in terms of the historical perspective for Imperial, uh, I'll tell you a little bit, bit about where we started from and what the drivers for change were within Imperial, uh, what our selection process was when we decided to obviously work with OB10 and develop that, that long-standing partnership arrangement. Uh, what sort of uh, back office systems you need to have in place, certainly from a procurement and uh, accounts payable perspective, and how we've used a fuzzy logic software solution to help us uh, in our ambitions to achieve uh, you know, high levels of touchless. A little bit about the internal communications uh, within the organization on the process, any, uh, on the process of e-invoicing. Uh, uh, also looking at the external communications with our supply base, which is, which is an extremely important area. A little bit about what I think the future looks like and how we're going about addressing our long tail of supplies. Most organizations obviously will have a long tail. Uh, a little bit about the results so far. In terms of Imperial at a glance, 
uh, as Ruth said, we're quite an old institution. Uh, we've been around uh, just over 100 years. Uh, our focus is primarily science, technology, and medicine. We're close to a turnover of eight, uh, a billion, uh, we're turning over about 800 million. Uh, we have a supply base of about seven to 8,000 supplies. We have lots of academic uh, disciplines uh, within the college, uh, as you might expect. So we have a much larger supply base compared to some, some other institutions. Uh, we are a world-class institution. Invariably, we're always within the top 10, competing against the likes of Oxford and Cambridge University within the UK uh, and the IV League institutions. Uh, within the US, uh, and we have four academic faculties uh, covering all of the old uh, engineer, engineering disciplines and moving straight forward to uh, medicine and business school. In terms of our organization, uh, we very much started our journey uh, into touchless uh, electronic invoicing in, uh, at 2005 6. Uh, Procurement was well advanced in terms of uh, how it had modernized uh, its, its use of uh, e procurement systems. However, uh, within the AP environment, uh, it was still very old, clerical, bureaucratic based approach, uh, very much a paper driven approach. And there was a need really to uh, address this, this neglected area within the college. It was very much seen as a bit of a backwater area for the college. Uh, we hadn't devoted uh, a great deal of time and energy to see how we could make improvements. Uh, and certainly the staff within the, the AP team uh, very much saw sort of uh, the move towards uh, using new technology as a bit of a threat uh, rather than an opportunity. So there was a lot of effort that went into uh, winning hearts and minds in the early days uh, and really to sort of enrich the whole sort of experience and job within uh, the accounts payable arena. So, so there were greater opportunities for uh, career development uh, and much more sort of uh, involvement in, in, in how the processes work and how you could help the strategic sort of goals of the organization in terms of uh, sustainability, uh, cash management, etc. So we've now sort of got to the point where we've uh, aligned both the finance and procurement sort of uh, uh, group of people, accounts payable and uh, the procurement team work very much uh, hand in glove. It's a combined effort and that's an extremely important factor when you want to realize your strategic goals in terms of achieving a touchless environment. In terms of what our touchless environment look, looks like, I'm going to sort of take you through uh, the process from start to finish. What you need to consider here is that we're actually going to be moving from the top right hand corner uh, left to the left hand corner. So effectively our process starts with buyers raising uh, a purchase order in our ERP system. All of our uh, ordering is done electronically uh, using uh, the advanced procurement, procurement suite within an Oracle system. Moving left, the arrow takes you to the supplier so the suppliers uh, receive, invariably receive, uh, our purchase orders electronically. Quite a large number of those suppliers now actually receive that data straight into their, their e-commerce systems and their back office systems, enabling them to uh, convert uh, that purchase order data into either a file or, or, or electronic file in a common standard, which they can then send to OV10 sort of moving down the arrow, as you can see on the left-hand side, where OB, OB10 takes that information, validates it against uh, our criteria, which we've agreed with OB10, and then they're able to send that high-quality data back to us, uh, which is received every morning into an Oracle op open interface. Uh, and that uh, invoice data is then uh, effectively squirted into our uh, Oracle system, is is matched uh, line for line in most details, either because the line detail is, is completely accurate in terms of what the supplier has sent to us. And if there is uh, inaccurate matching, then we're able to use the fussy logic program to look for key data within the invoice file, which enables us again to match off against line detail. And that enables the invoice uh, to be ready for payment once an email alert has obviously gone uh, to the buyer within within the college to either sort of alert us that 
uh, there's a problem with the particular invoice and they want it put on hold. So effectively, uh, that's what created our touchless system. In terms of the sorts of factors you need to take into account when adopting a truly touchless environment, I've put this really under three main headings, very much uh, all linked together. The first heading is having, which is people, is having highly trained and motivated staff within both the accounts payable department and the procurement department. Uh, when we started off this project, as I sort of alluded to earlier, it was very much a case of bringing our accounts payable uh, team up to the required standard that we had already adopted within our purchasing environment. Uh, and that enabled us to move to an environment where uh, we we were able to uh, uh, move to a more specialist service operating model. The next sort of step, which is extremely important, is uh, technology. In order to sort of get to a touchless environment, clearly, as as you saw in the last slide, uh, having a good procurement system and high quality data is extremely important. Uh, we obviously uh, have got that sort of information set up, and that took some time to set up, but it enabled us to uh, introduce electronic uh, invoicing and touchless uh, and a touchless process much more easily uh, if we hadn't had that data in the first place. Another important factor is to obviously integrate procurement and AP systems as much as you can because that makes the journey much easier. In terms of uh, technology, one mustn't sort of lose sight of uh, the, the, the supplier systems as well. Supplier systems will vary uh, when we're dealing with hundreds if not thousands of suppliers then it's very difficult to uh, obviously have a standardized approach but you do need to work with suppliers who are capable uh, of providing the level of data that's needed either to ourselves uh, through OV10 or in, in some cases directly. Uh, what that obviously creates is uh, uh, minimizing staff intervention uh, we've been able to use the Fuzzy Logic uh, software solution that we de developed in-house uh, to greater effect, uh, which en enables us to obviously send complete information. But I'll tell you a little bit more about the Fuzzy Logic in due course. And the final sort of step that we've, we would recommend following is, is keeping your processes as simple as possible. Standardize, keep to sort of one standard approach. Uh, I've seen sort of instances where hybrid models are used, but we've certainly found by having one standardized approach with high standards uh, applied, uh, it makes touchless much more easily uh, available. And that allows you to continuously improve. And throughout this whole, whole sort of uh, journey, you have to remain resolute. In terms of the ASWAS situation before electronic uh, invoicing, I'm afraid to say uh, we were uh, an organization that also sort of followed uh, the paper invoice trail. We had, we, we had about 180,000 paper invoices coming into our organization uh, each year. We had a good track record, however, but uh, we were throwing lots of people at, at the sort of uh, paper-based approach, uh, which was uh, very inefficient. Uh, and at that time, the majority of our invoices had to be keyed in, in manually. In terms of the authorization process, it was a really mad process that we had in place, and why we put it in place, one will never know, but what effectively was happening uh, is that invo invoices were input into the system. We then actually physically copied all of those invoices, uh, sent them out to our academic departments for approval, and they simply sat in boxes in the corner of a departmental office gathering dust. Uh, when looking at the system, uh, in hindsight, we were simply passing paper around the organization without thinking of the, the real implications. Uh, at the time, uh, our costs were quite high. Uh, we were paying, we worked it out uh, that we were paying in excess of three pounds per transaction. In terms of having to make the changes, the strategic vision for purchase to pay uh, started we started the journey in 2006, so we've been a little while at this whole process, but we started from the premise that we wanted to uh, have high quality matching taking place uh, with uh, touchless uh, in place for sort of certainly the mainstream supplies that we trade with. We did a Pareto exercise. We looked at uh, where the main volumes of transactions were coming from, which suppliers, and we very much focused in on those suppliers uh, at the early stages of this whole sort of implementation. We wanted, obviously, to make better use of our, 
of our resources, principally people, we felt clearly that we were uh, not very efficient in, in our model. Uh, we, we also felt that there was a great opportunity to improve our cost structure, both with our suppliers and both uh, internally uh, within, our, within our operations. And clearly, that's very much important in terms of current issues around supply chain risks. We also wanted to make sure that uh, we increased the number of invoices that we could pay on time. Uh, as all of you will know, uh, invariably, uh, it's not always possible to track where an invoice is within the system. It can be obviously uh, sit, sit, sitting within the mail room, or it can be sitting at you know beside it at someone's desk. So actually, uh, being able to pinpoint exactly where uh, an invoice was at any point in the process has been extremely important and allowed us to pay uh, suppliers quickly where we need to and obviously make payments on time and take advantage of some of the uh, added value services that Rude has mentioned earlier on. Uh, that clearly will enable better cash management. As, as a higher education institution, uh, sustainability is now a key requirement and how we use uh, uh, our cash is extremely important. There's less capital. Uh, funding available for universities, so cash flow management is, is a really important feature and electronic invoicing and touchless uh, now gives us that capability. Uh, Rude also mentioned the fact that uh, you can reduce the number of queries uh, through the introduction of a touchless environment and we've certainly uh, seen good signs of movement in that area. We've got some more work to do. Uh, we've recently sort of brought the procure and pay help desk together to minimize the number of queries that we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, but there's certainly more, more, more work in that whole area that we need to do. And finally, uh, in terms of our requirements, we, we clearly want to uh, minimize the, the, the level of space that we have for our operations. We operate out of a prime central London location, so where and, and, and space is at a premium. So if we can reduce the, the amount of space we, we, we use, then that's, that's another major benefit. Why did we actually then decide to use OB10? Uh, well, we've used OB10 uh, for a number of years since 2006, but uh, in the last sort of uh, 12 months, we've actually tested the market again because we wanted to develop our program further. So we looked at a number of other options besides OB10, such as the use of Oracle I supplier portal that would enable us to receive our invoices electronically through the Oracle system, and a number of scanning technologies. I know that some of you are currently also using scanning te technologies. Uh, during that exercise, we scored all of the companies, and OB10 uh, came out uh, with the highest rating for the following reasons. Uh, we obviously work globally and uh, OB10 have a worldwide network of suppliers in place and that's extremely important to us given that we're working across different regional areas. We also felt that they continue to provide leading cutting edge solutions uh, that enable the receipt of invoices from both our small and large suppliers and having a one stop shop solution. Uh, as I said earlier, a standardized approach is, is extremely important to our organization so we don't have to maintain or manage different, a number of different types of solutions. So the tax compliance issues uh, are perhaps not as important uh, to us, although we have a, co a complicated tax regime uh, in, terms, in terms of our operations. We've also, we also felt that OB10, from, from their track record of working with us, uh, understand our business requirements. Uh, they have a great uh, track record of enrolling suppliers onto their network, and that takes a lot of strain away from my own operations uh, when, when looking to engage with the supplier community. Uh, we generally felt that they, they're, they're, they're very flexible and agile, uh, will go the extra mile if needed. And uh, finally, we felt they've always been competitive. We don't need to obviously install any extra software or hardware uh, in our back office uh, areas, and that's a big plus point. In terms of the ERP system that we use here at Imperial, uh, I've, I've, we're, we're an Oracle house and have been uh, since 1999, uh, so we're quite a mature uh, ERP user. Uh, we use, obviously, all of the Oracle financial systems. Uh, we, we use the latest Oracle Advanced Procurement Suite and Accounts Payable module. Uh, and from, as I said, the very start of our sort of program, 
uh, our aim was to receive all of our invoices electronically through the Oracle ERP uh, with the goal that we should ideally match to a line level on, on the purchase order data that we submit to uh, our suppliers and we introduced the concept of a perfect match and the current goal that I've set, uh, set us, ourselves is to match over 90% 90 90 of our volume uh, by 2014. We're currently uh, processing in the order of about 180, 190,000 invoices per annum. Uh, however, we recognize also that some of our suppliers are not able to provide to line detail, and that's been a feature really since 2006 when we first embarked on this particular exercise. Uh, so, uh, given that we had some good IT internal capability, we built a fuzzy logic uh, solution into our system that looks the key data on invoices uh, to aid the, on the line matching capability. Uh, that's certainly been a great asset to us because we, we've we also been on this journey with our supplier base. Some of the sort of suppliers that we trade with, even sort of suppliers who you would think uh, are pretty savvy when it comes to, to IT, uh, where we buy lots of obviously IT equipment within the college for our academic activities, even some of the IT suppliers, uh, we're a little bit slow in adopting this type of approach. Uh, so we've had to sort of hold hands to some extent, which has been surprising, uh, but we've got there in the end. Uh, so line matching sort of, uh, level detail continues to be a high sort of aspect of our sort of whole approach, and we carefully uh, look at all the supplies that where we want to line match. Uh, however, obviously, for our next phase of e invoicing, uh, which is the PO convert uh, uh, solution provided by uh, OB10, is aimed at the small and medium-sized enterprises. So, our sort of high standards that we've set for uh, touchless processing, we might need to temper that slightly. In terms of internal communications, here here are some of the sort of key messages that I think organisations really need to take account of. Uh, when embarking upon a program of this type, you need to, you know, invest your own time and money uh, to improve improve the, the pay process uh, and deliver the expected benefits. I think it's really important, and something that we did from the outset was plot out all of your processes very clearly, and really look to identify where uh, key improvements uh, can be made. Involve the local management. Uh, straight away, I think it's really important that individuals within the accounts payable team and within the procurement team are on board, that they see what the benefits are in the short term and in the long term and that they buy into the, into the particular change because you want people on board and you want them to feel part of the whole process. And allow yourself uh, a reasonable time frame because you are going to encounter uh, uh, resistance uh, you know, across the supply base, for, for example. Uh, so be realistic about the goals you want to set yourselves. It does take you know, maybe a couple of years to get everybody on board. I know some organizations may have done that more quickly, but I think uh, unless you resource uh, that work uh, uh, adequately, then uh, you're, you're, you're doomed to sort of failure if you're, not, if, you're, if you're not very careful. So sustained commitment is clearly an important uh, requirement when embarking upon a, a program of this type. Uh, Clearly, you get some key benefits from that, and I think you've got to make that clear within the organization as a whole as well, that compliance across the organization is really important. If you are going to be putting uh, really effective supply agreements in place uh, with diff different organizations, if you want to realize those benefits, you've got to have uh, good systems in place to match, uh, match line detail off against, uh, and that ensures that you get good compliance and that if you are putting effective contracts in place that they are uh, meeting the requirement even if you do have fairly low tolerance levels. Uh, the, the, the key messages as, as well is that you can achieve process efficiencies uh, with, through this particular type of program uh, that's in terms of, of, of headcount sort of efficiencies, space efficiencies, process efficiencies and that obviously delivers uh, critical components for success within the organization. In terms of the external communications, then that's, you mustn't under, underestimate uh, the requirement there as well. Early engagement with the supplier uh, community is, is really going to be uh, key. You really do need to identify the key people 
within your supplier community to talk to and ensure that they understand what's required. That obviously is not going to be as easy if you're dealing with thousands of suppliers, suppliers rather than hundreds, but certainly if you're embarking upon a program where you want to get touchless off the ground, then close working relationships uh, in conjunction with OB10 is really important. Uh, you have to put yourself in marketing hat on to sell the benefits as uh, as I found, suppliers do not always like the idea of change. That's that's a common sort of reaction, and certainly one that we've encountered uh, quite often. Uh, ensure your message is kept simple and do not overcomplicate. Uh, collaborate. We are in voice provider. OV10 have been brilliant in terms of helping to engage with suppliers. They've taken a lot of pressure of our organisation. We can leave that responsibility with them, and that enables us to concentrate on on other added value act activities. Segment your supply base if you can. Identify those critical suppliers uh, that you want to work with closely, and they're the ones which you can manage more more closely by working uh, in conjunction with OB10. When communicating, we've sort of adopted what we call the three P process about being professional, uh, give a clear message, be persuasive, and be persistent. In terms of what the future looks like for uh, touchless processing. Uh, we've obviously addressed uh, our high volume suppliers. We're now embarking on embarking a modern program where we're addressing our tailored suppliers. We've got about 6,000 in number, which will help us to achieve this 95% uh, touchless processing environment. It's very much a program that's, uh, that's running, running live at the moment. Uh, our aim is to sort of have that program finished uh, uh, in, 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 in 2014. Uh, the OB10 PO Convert solution uh, is a great solution to address the tailor suppliers. It all sort of falls in line with my program to have one standard approach. Uh, something that I see will sort of be happening in a lot of organizations uh, is if you don't have an electronic invoice, you're not able to pay or you won't pay. And I think that will become the norm within, within most organizations over the next two or three years. Certainly, I think we'll begin to see trading networks uh, increasing in size which will allow some degree of standardization, which is often uh, uh, something that the suppliers uh, uh, respond to us about in terms, of, uh, in terms of different options being made available to them in terms of electronic invoicing. But if we do have standardization, that's going to be a, a key point. Uh, I think there will be more merger and acquisition activity in this space. Uh, clearly, that's something that's happening right now. Uh, Another key uh, uh, requirement for the future is the merger of uh, procurement and AP. Uh, we've done that within Imperial, very much sort of working closely uh, in unison with one another. I think that's really important if you want to achieve the goals of touchless processing. That obviously will deliver uh, many more opportunities for savings. Uh, more collaboration will result as, as a consequence. And there will be a much greater focus on added value services such as uh, the ones Rude mentioned, supplier finance, analytics, dynamic discounting, uh, and greater collaboration uh, across organizations. In terms of our results so far, we've really sort of uh, achieved quite a lot over the last sort of five or six years. I'm really proud of what the organization has, has been able to achieve. We've now got a transfer, transformed organization in place with some clear aims and objectives to be, uh, you know, even even sort of further ahead uh, uh, in, the, in, this, in this whole area. We, we've obviously got a can-do attitude in place now. We've got people thinking that improvement you know, is always possible rather than thinking of the negatives, they're thinking of the positives. Uh, we've reduced our cost base significantly from three pounds per transaction to less than a pound. Uh, we've obviously reduced the headcount uh, within our operations. Uh, which is obviously a feature of modernizing uh, operations. Uh, we've got a, a clear goal in place to address the next 30% of suppliers by moving the remaining part of our business to the PO convert solution. Uh, we've got a much better way of working across our finance operations where the team uh, within, within, within the college works much more closely, uh, a much more sort of strategic approach to how we do business uh, with our supply chain partners. Uh, we've got m much improved processes and a standardized way of working. And it's interesting to note that uh, relationship with suppliers also improved by working closely with the suppliers and, and looking at, uh, at things beyond just simply uh, 
the process of actually buying and selling, uh, looking at the whole relationship. This is a key component of that relationship, uh, and it enables you to get much more closer to your suppliers and, and have a, a better working relationship ship as a consequence. In terms of how we had to, how, you, how do you get to 90% touchless as an organisation, then uh, you've got to. There's a few pointers I'd like to give to you today, really, so that you can think about this and uh, and how you can go about putting a program in place. From my perspective, you've really got to have high quality data going out of your organisation to to your suppliers. And it's crucial that you really do invest in a good procurement system that enables you to uh, trade electronically with your supply chain. That's key to sort of moving towards a, a, a touchless environment. Good quality data out, in my perspective, it's, you get the ability to get the good data quality, uh, good data quality coming back. I think you've really got to aim to match invoices at a line level detail with, with your purchase order data. That's something we've sort of had in our hearts and minds from the very start, and I think that's something that you should always uh, consider from the very start of your project. If your system c cannot sort of do the line matching detail that's required, then look to write a fuzzy logic solution or buy one from the marketplace because that increases your capability significantly. Another key point is procurement and the AP team working together closely or in unison. That's really key to, to that's a really key requirement to our success. And I think uh, those sorts of uh, organisational changes are necessary if you really do want to sort of move the agenda forward. Get staff on board. Uh, that's that, that's something that we've done early on. Uh, make sure you communicate the message clearly. Uh, and that you keep people sort of motivated and energized and that they feel that they're part of the, the change program. Engage early with your supply chain partners. It's quite surprising how they might be able to help you. Uh, uh, there may be things that you could do better that just simply come out of working more closely with them. This is the point I made about relationships. And sell the benefits of the approach, and you've got to keep on selling the benefits of the approach for the message to get home. Uh, and I suppose my final sort of point is be prepared to encounter resistance, resistance but remain resolute. Supp you know, suppliers will come on board. Uh, that's really sort of important that you just maintain momentum and keep, keep, keep active and uh, you'll finally achieve your goals. Back to Susie. Thank you very much indeed, John, um, for a very detailed um, overview of what you're doing there. So very useful indeed. Closing uh, the polls with our, our last poll question, please. So coming up on the screen now, if you could answer this. It's the last poll question of the day before I hand over to Reid. Um, do you have a clear clear business goals on in place to remove paper from accounts payable? So if you can tick the box most appropriate to you, please. So um, the case is in place and you have started. Uh, yes, your business case is in place, but you haven't yet started. The case will be defined um, within the next six months. The case will be defined within the next six to 12 months, or you haven't yet, yet assessed the goals and you don't have a case timeline in place as yet. So if you could uh, just respond to that question, please, closing the poll in three, two, one. Let's have a look at where everyone is in their business case compilation journey coming up on your screen now. So really encouragingly, 36% uh, encouragingly, of you have a, a case in place and you have, you have started on the journey. Um, and 28% of you um, haven't yet assessed what the goals might look like. And hopefully this webinar has really helped you potentially accelerate, uh, accelerate that. Back to you, Reed, please. Thank you, Susie. Um, and also, of course, thank you, John, for a very detailed um, description of, of your journey, your objectives, and, um, and how you got there. Um, to, sum, to summarize, as, uh, and John basically said it all, um, um, electronic invoicing does give you very significant benefits and, and, and business value. Of course, it replaces the paper, it takes the paper out. I think that's been very clear from uh, John's story that for him, e-invoicing does not include paper. 
and he is using the invoice to streamline his invoice process. No more, as he called it himself, uh, passing paper around the office or boxes with invoices uh, gathering dust in academic environments um, where obviously people have much better things to do than improving invo than approving invoices. Um, it also allows you to scale your operation with less resources. As, as John very clearly said, uh, uh, Imperial College is currently in, 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 in prime locations here in London. Space is expensive here, so if you can achieve space efficiencies using electronic invoices, uh, electronic invoicing, then obviously that's a very welcome business benefit. But also we see also amongst our customer base, quite a number of uh, mergers and acquisitions happening where we see shared services being able to deal with increased volumes without having to add more staff to the accounts payable environment. It is a simple ma matter of um, asking how we tend to onboard more suppliers. You can handle the, um, the, the extra inbound volume with, with the same amount of people. But what has also become very clear from John's story, and this is what we also live every day, is that moving to true trustless uh, invoice processing is, is a journey. It's very iterative. Uh, but so long as you set goals, uh, and those goals are, as, as, as John also said, are, are achievable, realistic. So long as you set goals, you will get there um, uh, adopting a very holistic view with regards to the solution. It's about people, process, and technology in the end. It is not just about finding the right IT solution. It is also changing the way people work and changing and adopting your processes to be able to, uh, to optimize your efficiencies. And of course, I've heard the word uh, three or four times in John's presentation, be resolute. You will get there so long as you align objectives and make sure that everybody has the same understanding of what you're trying to achieve. Um, why do, uh, why, why do so many companies adopt AB10 when they move to e-invoicing? And again, John basically has, has said it all, but to go through this relatively quickly, um, if you look at our customer base, the majority of the FTSE 100 companies are OB10 customers, and they, and they do that because they trust the services, they trust the efficiencies and the performance of OB10, its staff, and its network. Also, when you speak about trust, it's actually quite striking that we partner with seven out of the 10 uh, finance and administration BPOs, the business process outsourcers, whose business model may not necessarily always be to immediately automate processes, but they trust OB10 with their in continuous improvement targets they have with their customers, and these are sometimes very, very challenging. We're a global organization, and also interestingly, every year we, we process around $162 billion of commerce through our network, usually on line level detail, which I said earlier opens up the promise of very detailed spanned analytics that we that we are going to be able to do at some point. Um, we don't just do e-invoicing. We have developed a number of additional services that John also uh, pointed to, purchase order services, the ability to show uh, the invoices in the uh, Imperial College uh, approval process to suppliers, so suppliers can manage their own cash, suppliers can manage their own queries. But we do everything in order to improve e-invoicing, e-invoicing at the center of, of, of our business, and the purchase order service and the invoice data service are there to improve uh, the ability for companies to move to touchless e-invoicing. And in order to go there, it is very important that there are no hurdles with regards to what sort of systems you can integrate with. We should be able to uh, integrate with any system without putting undue burden on the buyer or the supplier organization. John pointed at our network. Um, there are networks and networks. Our network works so that suppliers only connect once to be able to send invoices to every single buyer on our network, by invitation, of course. But we do not need to go back to suppliers to connect them again, which means that the network effect that we offer is very, very strong. Um, we may, we, we may be getting a little bit gray around the ears. We, we've got a decade of, uh, of experience, but we're still very innovative, but at the same time, a pair of safe hands. And of course, we've got uh, global capabilities, or otherwise we would not be able to serve the FTSE 100 customer base that we currently have. And with that uh, uh, summary, I'd like to pass back to Susie and potentially to any questions that you might have.
Ruth and John. Many thanks indeed. Lots of questions, so let's kick off. Um, first one for you, please, John. Uh, can you describe what controls have been put in place to prevent fraud if the invoice is indeed not touched? Uh, that sort of links to our supplier setup process so that sits within the procurement sort of part of our organization. So before uh, we trade with any supplier, we go through a comprehensive supply setup sort of process uh, to ensure that any invoices we receive uh, are legitimate and are not from organizations that are unknown to us. So uh, to date, we've had no incidents where we received any invoices electronically uh, that have been dubious or fraudulent. So very much part of the sort of procure to pay sort of setup uh, arrangement that we sort of manage that very carefully and closely as it's a as it's a major risk these days and one that we're very sort of aware of. Thank you John. Uh, question for you please Rude. So this is from a viewer uh, dialing in from India. Um, uh, this viewer is saying paper invoices are a legal requirement in India and um, they're looking to see if cost savings can be achieved um, with with continuing to receive paper, um, can, what is the what is the business case looking like for electronic invoicing in a country where paper is still mandated? Uh, that's, a, that's a very good question. Of course, we're hoping to uh, to get a ruling from the Indian tax authorities relatively quickly. We are speaking to the Indian tax authorities, but there's of course a number of other things that need to be in place before we can continue there. Um, there is still there may still be a business case in the sense that so long as long as you digitize the paper and you get uh, uh, invoice data into the organization, you may be able to process that invoice data much more quickly. However, you need to be aware that the uh, original invoice is still the paper invoice and that the, um, uh, the data that you get, if you digitize it from the paper copy, is still going to be as good as the paper invoice was. So in that sense, the efficiencies you're looking at uh, or you're looking for further downstream may not be realized. However, we have quite a number of uh, suppliers from countries like India sending invoices to other countries where e-invoicing is allowed. And even though they still need to retain a paper invoice, uh, they, they s still send us the invoice data, which obviously gives the buyer uh, the opportunity to do exactly what you would do with a compliant invoice. You can do the same in India where um, invoice data is sent to the buyer, but again, you would still have to have a paper invoice as the, as the legal copy whenever you get audited. So you can do it. It is a, it's a matter of getting supplies to send you the invoice data using, a, or using the portal, but at the same time it's really important you keep the paper copy. Thank you, Ruth. Um, John, a question for you. How did you calculate the savings um, around m moving from paper to electronic? Uh, it was a very sort of simple calculation that we we made. We we, we looked at obviously our staffing costs. Uh, we worked out uh, some of our sort of uh, other other operational costs in terms of space, in terms of computer uh, time. It was a very simple calculation that then translated looking at our invoice volumes and those other costs that tra translated into a transaction fee, which sort of equated to the three pounds that. Uh, I mentioned early on in my presentation, and when obviously we then looked at the cost of uh, trading with OB10, the cost of uh, of obviously a transaction was uh, competitive, uh, and that's a discussion you might want to have with Rude at some point in the future or or his team, uh, and then obviously added all those other standard costs to that uh, additional cost from OB10, and that's how we uh, landed with uh, the one pound. The sort of one pound fifty charge. So it was quite a simple calculation uh, to make uh, to enable us to get to that point. Okay. Question for you, please, Rude. Is AB10 compatible with JD um, JD Edwards Enterprise One? And what about PeopleSoft? Okay. Good question. Um, I said earlier there should be no hurdles for us to interface with any type of system that is capable of receiving flat data or structured data. So in that sense, uh, I, I see no issues. It is very, very rare that we are not capable of, of interfacing. I've been with ABTEN for more than seven years. I've actually never witnessed this, witnessed it. 
And um, specifically on PeopleSoft, we actually have quite a number of customers on PeopleSoft on, on, on various uh, systems there. So uh, uh, there's definitely knowledge and experience in the Overton organization for that. A question for you, please, John. What is the Imperial College's PO compliance as a percentage? Uh, very high. Uh, we use purchase orders as our sort of main means of trading. Uh, for example, we don't have uh, a great use of purchasing cards or corporate cards in, in use at the college. Uh, so uh, we're up in the high 90s, really, in terms of compliance. Everything is that we we order is pretty much done on a purchase order. So we've put a lot of time and effort to ensure that is the case, and so that we have a firm foundation to enable us to do other things such as electronic invoicing. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, a, a question again for you, John. Does Imperial College act as in an advisory advisory role at all on the implementation of AB10? Um, and um, does Imperial College get involved with any customization of AB10? Uh, we do act as a reference point uh, for AB10 from time to time. If potential customers contact OB10, then we're quite happy to uh, either have a telephone conference call uh, with that organization or uh, if that organization wants to visit Imperial, then we're, we're happy to see people subject to obviously time constraints within any organization. We've done that on many occasions. Uh, and on the second point, we, we obviously press OB10 quite hard in terms of the developments we, we might want to see in place. Uh, they they may see us as a hopefully a challenging client, but we obviously want, want to and, and do work closely with OB10 in terms of further developments. And we've, as I said within my presentation, found them to be uh, uh, a good listener and willing to implement changes which are beneficial to all of their customers in due course. So yes, we do. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, another question for you, John. Have you mandated e-invoicing for your suppliers? Uh, yes, we have. Uh, our stance uh, early on, uh, sort of from 2006, was more of a light touch. Uh, but with the campaign that we've got taking place at the moment with respect to our next phase of electronic invoicing, which is geared uh, aimed at uh, the sort of small to medium-sized enterprises, uh, we have actually mandated uh, the use of uh, uh, PO convert. Uh, we think the market now is more mature; uh, it's willing to embrace this type of approach uh, much more than maybe you know five or six years ago. So uh, we we have uh, issued a mandate that in order to trade with the organisation, uh, uh, organisations will have to adopt this type of approach. Okay, um, and John, also, um, how do you ensure the quality of the process orders? Do you, the academics raise the orders or the procurement team? Yes, uh, that's really a good point, a really important point, uh, and it links to my sort of uh, point about good quality data out, good quality data in. Uh, we look at uh, how we can automate uh, if we're dealing with uh, uh, suppliers of equipment, research equipment, or suppliers of IT equipment or, or consumables. We'll try our utmost to load all of that information onto an electronic, electronic catalog. We, use, uh, our, we, 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 we subscribe to a marketplace uh, that enables us to put a lot of our, uh, our purchase order requirements onto uh, electronic catalogs. Uh, where that's not in place, we have guidelines uh, that we issue to our buyers in terms of the quality of data that we require. So it's very important to get the message across to buyers that they uh, use the standard format uh, as much as possible. Uh, we're still obviously working uh, on ensuring that we get higher levels of compliance in that area, but that's very much our focus from day one. Okay, and I think this is going to be the final question. Um, how do you, just as for you please, John, how do you match your invoices with the purchase order? Is it based on total value? Is it is it line level? And you're talking about the fuzzy logic. Is it line level? And how do you address partial invoices? Uh, it's very much at, at, at line level detail. Uh, the ability 
to uh, match part uh, uh, invoicing is, is very simple. Again, that's, effect, that, that, that's, that's built within the process. So uh, suppliers can submit more than one invoice to us, so we don't hold payment up if there's a part delivery, for instance. Uh, we obviously have the ability to you know, uh, bring credits in through the system, so it, that's all been taken account of within the bill uh, that, that we've put in place, so uh, that hasn't caused us uh, any particular issues. We've not encountered any problems in that area at all. John Whitlow and Rude Van Hilton, many thanks indeed. If you'd like to contact Rude, um, you can see his contact information there. Uh, there were many questions unanswered, and I'm sure OB10 will come back to you individually to, um, to answer them. Uh, please do join us next week for our Shell uh, Shared Services story. Um, that, that's looking at how they're moving to world-class performance. And we have a, a great lineup for you as well next month with um, a lot of really strong case study webinars. So please make sure that you put those in your diary uh, and a number of events that we've got coming up where OB10 will also be present. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your time and attention today. We look forward to welcoming you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>